first, what's up, JoJo? I'm happy to be be with you again. Uh, this this uh, this year has been wild, man. I mean, it was it was crazy. Like, I, I you know, it, it went from uh from I was on tour and then put an album out and then went on vacation with the family and came back and thought I had the year planned out and all of a sudden uh, a global pandemic strikes and uh, here we are. Now I'm like in the, in the house trying to learn how to, rec- you know, to, you know, thank God. I mean, look, man, I, I got to tell you though, there's been, it's, it's hard, but it, there've been a lot of good things that came from this, like learning how to record from home and then realizing I don't need to travel, you know, six hours across the country to do sessions. I can still write songs from the comfort of my own home. Uh, you know, with with people from all over the world, which which has been dope, man. And, but it's been it was cra- crazy, bro. You're like, come on, man. You, 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 you think you think one thing and then another thing happens, but it's just how we adjust it. And um, and thank God we still have music. You know, thank God we have music and art that we can still put out things that hopefully make people happy and and um, you know, and, and give people hope. Are are you still locked down? And where are you at? By the way, I'm looking at him. He's on the roof of some building. Where where are you at? I am on the roof of my apartment right now, uh, just uh, chilling out because my girl is downstairs listening to Enya, and I'm not trying to get in the middle of her <laughs> Zen time. So, uh, so I said I'm going to take myself to this roof one time and uh, and pray to God that this Wi-Fi works well enough. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> you know, here we are. What but, is she? Uh, yeah, man, it's just a beautiful day in New York. It's a little gloomy, but it's it's, it's so nice out. If you walk, if you if you interrupted her in your time, what would happen? Bad things are going down, I assume. If if you walk into that, right? No, no, no. She's she's pretty chill, so I think she'd you know, uh, I, I you know, I, no, I think she'd be pretty chill about it. Hopefully, I mean, who knows? Next, and she's you know, she's cooking too. So I was like, you know, I'm trying, I'm trying to trying to get on in on this meal, but I ain't, you know, I was like, let me let let you know, you listen to your music, baby girl, you know. You. <laughs> And make that good food. We, you know, we chill. I'll take this up on the roof. It's all good. It's a nice day anyway. I'm over here with my dog. We chilling. Update on this new album you're working on. Give me, tell me everything you're allowed, you feel comfortable saying at this point. Yeah, I mean, we're still putting it together right now. So, you know, we've got most of it, most of it, most of the songs picked. But, uh, but I think, you know, like the first album, I'm going to put the cue cards together. You know, I take the cue cards and put the tempo and the title and see where the story is. Um, right now but but this album you know I, I you know the first one definitely felt like a vibe in and of itself and and uh and you know it was it was encouraging to hear a lot of people be like yo man I, I just love it I just put it on when I'm cleaning or I'm driving or whatever and it just gets me you know gets me from point A to point B or, but um as I said you know in this second album I kind of want to elevate it and I just want I want tempo I want people to be tired by the end of the album I want them to be <laughs> like yo that was a ride I just rode the King the Ka of albums. Or like, you know, like I just rode, I was on the Nitro, you know, like the Six Flags. Like I want people to feel like they just, you know, they just they just came off a roller coaster. And I think I think we've accomplished that with with, with the second, you know, we're we're in the middle of accomplishing that with the second album. Cause every time I listen to the songs over and over again, it's just more tempo. There's, you know, we got this one song that feels like a Caribbean vibe that I love. Uh, you know, uh, you know, I, I was, you know, we got, we got some songs that feel a little more, you know, like they in the disco vibe. I was just like, yo, I want temp, I want people to dance. I want, I want people to feel the pulse, um, you know, uh, cause there's a whole part of me that is very, you know, I'm introspective and I'm very like, oh, you know, let's reflect and I love home, but there's also the part of me like, yo, let's turn up till five in the morning. And I was like, you know, I want people to, I want people to catch that vibe, you know, because that is that is very much so a, a big part of me, you know. Let's let's dance, let's 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 you know, let's let's be together, let's feel this music, let's love it, you know. And um, so I'm so excited for the second album, man. The the, the vibe is very much up tempo, and and, uh, and I think we need a little up tempo, especially right now in the world. Uh, do you have a date, like a target time you hope to have the new album out? And are you working or do you have a title in your head for the album as well? We don't have a time. I don't even have a title yet because I think, um, you know, I think I'm, I'm still thinking about what the, what the story is and what the through line is for the album. So I don't know if I have like, I don't, we don't necessarily have a date yet um, and a time, you know, because I definitely want to take my time on, on, uh, on all of that, you know, and I think, I think, you know, the label, everybody, everybody's in agreement with that, but it's really like, I just want to see, I want to see where the narrative is because, you know, I really want to, 
even with the videos, I think everything is like, let's, let's not just shoot a video. I don't want to just like just go somewhere and shoot a video and it just be like, oh, they're in a cool location or whatever. I want to like create small movies, right? I want to create these small movies that take people on a journey from point A to point B. And then, you know, maybe we'll, you know, maybe we'll do something cool with them and put them together. Maybe they become one big one, one bigger one, right? Bigger piece of art that connects, right? Who's, who knows, right? But I think I'm, we're just taking our time with it. But for sure, this, this definitely, you know, this, the narrative is starting to lean towards, you know, um, you know, somebody who, uh, a person who has, uh, you know, kind of like has been uh, reckless, you know, it's almost like, you know, some of these songs are like a person who's, who's been reckless and then has like been like, dang, like, I learned from that. I don't regret any of that, but like, and it might've been better not to make some of those decisions, but like, but like, <laughs> I've, I've, I've definitely learned from it. Hold up. I'm sorry, bro. I got music. I got, I got TV playing in the back. Give me two seconds, bro. Let me ask you guys. <laughs> That's Yo, it's, it's homemade. It's homemade. Right. What are you going to do? Yo, Jojo, keep all of this, please. I'm keeping it. My dogs take any of this out of the cut. I'm not taking anything. My dog's gonna be crazy in the background soon. Don't stress. That's what <laughs> Half these interviews I've done, my dog is yelling like ah, yes, somebody I, walking by. Can I do this interview? I'm almost done. I'm almost done with it. So I'm just gonna load it for you. All right, thanks, bro. Oh, I just very much start. Yep. All right. Um, all right. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> We're keeping all this in, Anthony. <laughs> all right. Yo, <laughs> yo, keep, please, yo, keep, please, keep all of this, please. Anthony walking this around his it, house. Man, this is, this is, this is what it is. Like, this is one of my favorite things about these interviews. Yeah, man. I like, mean, I want to keep some of this when things get back to normal. Some of this kind of stuff. How to do that? I don't know, but that's some, This is one of my. This is one of my favorite things about you know 2020, and not many good things coming from it. But this is one of those. Just random dogs barking, your Wi-Fi, your TV on. You know, just who knows? I just love it. I've seen all the, you know, your, your post from the demonstrations, yeah. everything's so beautiful um, with all the social injustice on just yeah. full display over the last couple of weeks and months and sure. eye opening to many, certainly myself included. Are you uh, optimistic that you see uh, meaningful generational change coming from what has started? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I just being out there, you know, I'm, I'm heading to DC, uh, this weekend for Juneteenth, June, Juneteenth. And, you know, I know that's going to be a whole, uh, experience in and of itself as well. I'm going with my family, and, you know, my fiance, her sister, and my, my siblings. And, um, and, you know, I think it's like being out there one, it was, um, it was encouraging to see people of all races and creeds and backgrounds and religion out there. Um, you know, sexual orientation out there together um, in solidarity, um, just saying, black, you know, one thing, Black Lives Matter and agreeing on that and um, walking and marching together, standing together, uh, chanting together. Um, it, and it's, it's so encouraging and it's been moving and, 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 you know, and I do feel like change is happening, right? This moment feels different. You know, there are laws being uh, repealed now that haven't been touched for years, um, specifically uh, with the police. Um, uh, I saw Governor Cuomo at, uh, just in our state in New York. Um, New York, in New York City and the local officials have 288 days to figure out how they are going to reform the police system in their local communities. The mayors, the council members, all of them, they have 288 days from today from when we're speaking to, to come up with new legislation to figure out uh, what, where they're gonna, how they're going to uh, uh, figure out what defunding the, how much of the budget from the police budget will go to, to uh, you know, social workers and, and, and to, you know, contributing to people, you know, to in, in all the other areas that, you know, policing is not the only way we can protect our communities. And I think finally, the government officials are understanding that. And it's kind of hard for them to not understand that when you have people marching and people standing in solidarity, uh, all shapes and sizes and colors, right, together, the way that people are right now. And it's just, I think it's encouraging. It's definitely challenging, right? But I do feel like change is coming. It's already happening. 
and I think it's going to continue to happen. And I just, you know, I think it's important for uh, us just as human beings to fight for uh, our fellow uh, human beings, right? Our black brothers and sisters, um, because uh, they deserve the best and um, nothing less. And I think, uh, and and I, I do believe change is coming, man. I'm so, I'm just, I'm, it's just, it's beautiful to be out in the streets and just, you know, see people from everywhere standing together and marching together. It's, it's, it's so inspiring and encouraging. And it just makes me want to work harder as an artist to, uh, you know, to, um, and, and just as a human being to just do better and be better and, and listen better. And uh, so, yeah, I, to answer your question, yes, I do believe change is coming and I'm so excited for, for what that is. Very well said, man. And when we look back on this time, I think it's all important, at least to me and my family, that we look back on it and realize and, and know that we were, we were on the right side of history, you know? So that's, uh, that's something we should all think about, you know? So uh, Anthony Ramos, thank you for, all, for, for your, uh, your input on that for sure. Hamilton is on yeah. Disney Plus as we speak. I know everybody is going crazy. It really is. And this is the original cast, which, uh, of course, you were a part of. I mean, I don't think it needs to be pumped up anymore, but why not pump this thing up? If people haven't seen Hamilton, which I have not seen, uh, I haven't seen the play. Um, what do people need to know? Uh, I mean, I think, one, I'm so excited for people to see this movie. Um, I just saw it two days ago, and I was just blown away by my just my cast members, my friends. I just it was just like it's just like watching a group of superheroes that you just can't believe that you have all their numbers. You're like, well, I can't believe I have a phone number to Superman. I can't believe I have Batman's number. I can't believe I have Wonder Woman's number. That's how it felt watching them. And uh, you know, and uh, and I'm so excited to you know for the world, the world to be able to see this you know and uh, you know and and they you know folks who who have never been to broadway you know folks who kids or you know everybody right like pe people of all ages like you know hamilton is not a cheap ticket you know broadway is not a that's not a cheap ticket you know but i'm so grateful that for 6.99 or 7.99 or you know whatever whatever it is right for me plus that you know, someone can pay for the same seat as millions of others, right? And watch the same production of the original company, um, of this show that has changed um, our lives, right? For sure, the folks who were involved, but it seems to be changing the lives of so many people uh, all over the world. Um, who have been able to see it or listen to the soundtrack or right so i'm just like so grateful that this is jojo jasmine by hey the jasmine way. It's Hi. Jazz. <laughs> um now i'm getting hungry he's she's putting a plate in front um, of him <laughs> but nah man you know what i'm saying hold up. nah 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 let me take this out the shot hold up <laughs> but i'm so excited i'm so excited uh <laughs> for uh for for this movie to, to to you know to be in people's homes man it's so good man it's so good i, I caught facial expressions of uh you know of people you know think certain things people were doing on stage that i just never caught like when i was in the show i just would have never seen you know certain reactions certain little vocal things that i just i guess i didn't pay attention to when i was that you know that that, that show was two and a half years of my life and um and it's just so amazing to watch it now in 2020 four years after I left and to just be like, wow, like, uh, dang, I can't, we were, we did that. We were part of that. You know, it's, uh, it's crazy, bro. I can't, ex I can't explain it, man. It's so, it's, it's wild. It's wild. It's almost like when you step back from something for so long, you appreciate it more, um, right. you know, down the line. And that's how, that's kind of how it feels right now, you know, but you I'm so excited for people to see this. Now you guys check it out. Hamilton, the original cast, Broadway on Disney Plus right now. And of course, we're talking to Anthony Ramos right now, who played, uh, well, two characters on the show. You played Alexander Hamilton and uh, John Lawrence. Is that the correct pronunciation? Yep, John Lawrence, yep. So check that out, man. Disney Plus. Anthony, uh, are you planning to, I know the answer to this, but, you know, tour. I know you want to get back on the road at some point. 
who knows when nobody really knows but uh are you actively yeah. discussing a tour what's what's going on with that and how do you think things will be different when you hit the road again i think um i definitely yes the answer is yes i do want to go get back on the road and you know go on tour for sure i miss, I miss being on stage and i miss playing playing music and, and feeling that energy um but but i think right now the focus is like getting the album right and figuring out what that is because once we do that i think it's only going to contribute to the shows i'll be able to be more creative with 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 the process of making the show and you know and 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 really like really like uh, uh go in the way i want to but right now i think uh it's really like focusing on what the story is on the album what what do we want to say you know what do i want to say and then it's like boom once we get that it's like you know we hit the ground running with creative everything and then you know lighting i can't wait man i already i listen to songs and i think about the lighting already i'm like yo so when this part the pre-chorus hits we're gonna it's gonna be flashing red lights and then we're gonna cut the lights out <laughs> right before the pre ends and boom once we hear that drum on, on, on that drop on the drums we're gonna it's gonna be a, a splash of white light and then we're gonna have some strobes i'm like yo i'm already like I'm already picturing it in my head, you know, but I think sometimes I get ahead of myself. So right now, yeah, I definitely want to, I'm definitely going on tour again. I don't know when. Um, and I'm so excited for, for, for that. But right now I think it's just really focusing on the album, getting that, getting that right. Um, getting that story where we want it to be. And then, you know, and then it's, that's, that's, that's it. We out after that. There we go. Before I do anything else, I just need to know your, your wife, your, your, your fiance Jasmine just put a plate in front of you. Um, she and did. The plate, it passed right in front of the Zoom cam, <laughs> and I what what was that? Because I can just about smell it from my house in LA, and it looks so good. Describe this to people. That's <laughs> hilarious. <right now. laughs> our breakfast taco. So we got some sliced tomato. We have got some eggs and some bacon on a corn tortilla, and it's going to be delicious. So now that you just mentioned it, I'm gonna now I feel free to take a bite. So I'm gonna take, go a, take a bite. Uh, you guys, that's Anthony Ramos. I just had to know. I'm going to drop a track from The Good and the Bad, his, uh, his previous album, his first album, called Relationship. Now, tell me about this track. Uh, uh, you know, people have heard yeah, it, of yeah. course, but what do people need to know about Relationship? Relationship was, you know, that was a song about confusion. <laughs> it was like, you haven't been, like, with someone that, you know, b both of you were, like, doing everything you know, your, everything you did together was seemingly like what people who quote unquote would in a relationship would do, right? You guys are holding hands, you're staying over each other's houses, you're like kissing in the street or whatever, you're calling each other, you're texting each other, hey babe, all types of stuff. But then all of a sudden, somebody's like, hey, uh, you know, so uh, is this a thing? And they're like, nah, 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 this ain't. I'm not ready. I'm not ready for a commitment. I'm like, yo, we've been messing around for like two or three months. What do you mean you ain't ready? What are you, what, so what are we doing? I'm not talking to anybody else. Uh, so this song was definitely uh, just about how confused I was uh, in college when I went through. <laughs> all right. <laughs> there we go. I think we've all been through that for sure. Wait, this is not, we've been doing this thing for three months. What? All right. Uh, Anthony Ramos. It's about the, the gray area. Yeah, the gray area for sure. Anthony Ramos, relationship on the iHeartRadio countdown. Take a bite of your, uh, your food there, Anthony. He's going to get cold. I, I'll, I'll pause man. to you. Uh, not to try to force you to eat, but I don't want it to get cold on you. <laughs> Damn, Tom. Oh, my God. Go, go, right. Right. Let me take a sip of my. There we go. Do it, bro. There we go. All right, guys, we back. What up? It's JoJo on the radio. This is the iHeartRadio Countdown. My dude, Anthony Ramos, is hanging out. Anthony, uh, two-part question. Biggest crowd you've ever performed for, and the complete flip of that, in so many ways, have you ever been booed? I guess Radio City. Radio City. I was in the Christmas Spectacular. I was a singer at the, in the Radio City Christmas Spectacular. That was... Uh, you know that was that was pretty cool to be uh to perform there hopefully i can uh i can get there with my my own music uh we'll, we'll be there soon but um but yeah 
that was but i mean i mean dude like the but i think one of the most special shows i ever played was on tour and it was for about 700 people and um um my family was there was in brooklyn and um uh, it was so special man because i had like teachers from all walks of life there you know, and it wasn't the biggest show of numbers, but it felt like the biggest show of my life. You know, having my aunts there and uncles and my 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 parents were there, my uh my friends from from all walks of my life were all present. I'm talking my science teacher who passed me because I sang to her. Wow. Uh, you know, I definitely didn't deserve to pass, but she was like, yo, if you sing just my imagination, <laughs> I'll give you a passing grade. <laughs> that's how you, that's how you like, passed that class. Yo, are you serious? Like, oh my god! I'm guessing yes. that's not the show. If you ever that's were booed, that's that not class, the show you bro, got booed at. That is not the show I got booed at. But <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I've ever been booed, but I definitely got the crickets at a few open mics. Oh. Uh, I've definitely had some crickets for sure. Like, which I don't know. Which I think might be worse than booze. To be honest, it might be. You're like, damn, nobody like that. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, that that, <laughs> so that, that might was, be that worse. Was, uh, for that sure. was pretty rough. A few, a few, uh, yeah, a few, few open mics in Lower Manhattan. Definitely made, definitely will humble a person. Tough well, crowd. Anthony, give me a quick behind the scenes moment that few people know about. Give me something that uh, kind of funny, awkward, embarrassing, special, anything. Just what comes to mind when I say a little known behind the scenes moment from Hamilton? So people don't, people may not know that before I left the show, I had to, I had to wear a wig. I didn't wear a wig the whole time, but I had gotten a TV show called She's Gotta Have It on Netflix. And I would, and um, our director, Mr. Spike Lee asked me to cut my hair. And, uh, and I didn't have to cut it all the way, but I had to cut it a certain way that our director tommy kale from hamilton was like yo you need to wear wigs now for the rest of the time that you're going to be in the show i was going to be in the it overlapped it was about a month from when i was doing hamilton and shooting she's got to have it at the same time so tommy's like yo until you leave the show i'm sorry we're gonna have to give you a wig i was like yo don't do this to me man don't give me a wig <laughs> yo so they took so for anyone who knows the show, there's a character named Angelica Schuyler, played by Renee Elise Goldberry. Renee had a wig that she wore off Broadway at the Public Theater. They switched her wig out when we got to Broadway. They still had her old wig from the Public Theater. They grabbed that wig, they chopped it up to match the length of my hair or what they thought was the length of my hair, but it actually ended up being longer, which actually made for the one of the craziest, most the funniest moments I've ever had in my life and the cast didn't know I was coming out on stage with a wig so I walk out and make my first appearance in my shot which is the third song of the show and I'm like I'm John Lawrence in the place to be and I'm trying to rap and my cast immediately it registered them yo he has a wig that looked completely like over greased like they just dipped the whole bottle of oil, cur curling oil or whatever, and it's and and it's like longer than what my hair actually is. So my cast members actually start laughing on stage while I'm trying to rap, and then I start laughing. I couldn't even get the words out. So we have two or three. We have about two or three songs. So I want to apologize to anybody who came to that show. I'm like. Uh, I want to apologize to anybody who came to that show because I'm sorry we could not sing the words to these songs. F from my shot to the next song, Story of Tonight, all the way to Skylar Sisters. Like, finally, I get off stage, we're cracking up. Yo, we're like, we're laughing through lyrics. I'm like, I'm like, I'm not throwing away <laughs> my shot. And like, just cracking up. 
finally I get off the stage. Everyone, everyone got a laugh out of you. See people even on the on the surround, right? So we had people up. There was a platform that we had where people were singing up on a surround, like up top above us, and you just see shoulders just moving, shoulders moving. And finally, I come off stage, and stage manager she comes out from the shadows, bro. Like I mean, yo, it was like I was like, where did she come from? And it was like a ninja type move, and she's just like, get it together. And then she moves, like, yo, and I was like, I was like, all right. All right oh my God. Took a few deep breaths and did the rest of the show, but yo, it was hilarious, man. The whole cast was cracking up. They just, they weren't expecting it. They were not expecting me to come out with this old Angelica Schuyler wig from off Broadway. God, I would have loved to have been. just wasn't what they were expecting. I would have loved to have been at that show, Anthony. Anthony, uh, you may not know this about me, but I am obsessed with the paranormal. I've got a podcast called Paranormalish. I'm off the deep end with this stuff. So I'm, I'm told you may have, or, or, or your dog, I think, this is one of the crazier stories, but your dog, actually, it's not so crazy. I've heard these things before. Your dog sees ghost, true or false? I think it's true, 100%. I think my dog, Nala, little French bulldog, I think she's, she's I think she 100% sees ghosts. She'll just randomly be looking off into the abyss and all of a sudden I see the top lip quiver and I'm like, yo, what is she? The head tilts a little bit. She does the little the little head tilt and then she'll stand up on her legs and she was sitting and then she's just barking at the air. And I'm like, you for sure see the old tenants in this apartment right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that's, you're seeing somebody. Somebody, some you, the old house owner, the people who bought this house have not left this house since they bought it, they have been living here this whole time. Uh, and they are still living here probably. So I welcome them into our home. Um, I hope we made you proud with the way we decorated and, uh, and just uh, let's all live in harmony. <laughs> yeah, Anthony, uh, to be continued on this, if you or your dog keep seeing things, you got to let me know. Just throwing that out there. You yeah. also know this guy from A Star is Born with, you know, Gaga and Bradley Cooper. Um, you're probably thinking, where do I know that guy from? He was Gaga's uh, best friend in the movie. Give me a quick behind the scenes yeah, moment yeah, yeah. from the shooting of A Star is Born. So, uh, so one night that I'll never forget was when Gaga, but you know, she, she asked us all to call by name, Stephanie on set, right? And, uh, you know, Stephanie, when she was playing one night, well, we did we did the uh, shallow scene, so it's this big scene which shallow became the hit off of the you know off of the soundtrack. But that the filming of that song was I think at the Greek theater. I mean, yo, it was one of the, the most amazing experiences I've had on 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 a set. And we, sh we filmed it right. We did a few takes of it. Her and Bradley are out there and they're singing, and it's it was amazing. But so the extras, right, the background had been there for hours, waiting for hours and hours and hours. So in between setups, Stephanie gets on the piano and she plays like a 15, 20 minute set for the audience. And it ended up just being like a 15, 20 minute concert, a Lady Gaga concert acoustic for the crew and the cast and, and, the, and the back and, you know, the extras in the background that were there. And it was just so special, it was so impromptu. It was like not planned, I don't think. I mean, and, it, and if it was, and they, then it looked not planned, which was amazing, you know, which was so awesome. And um, and it was just, it was so special to just hear her like sing. She was just sing, you know, singing down, bro. And like playing this piano beautifully. And it was just like, it was so, uh, it was just so awesome to see somebody like, who was so uh, masterful at their craft do what they do with as much freedom as she does it with you know that it was it was uh so that moment i'll never forget i'll never forget that moment that that was that, that was crazy that was wild man everybody the whole crew everybody applauded you know erupted after she after she finished it was uh it was special the movie there's a movie coming out called in the heights which is the film version of the uh the broadway play Lynn Manuel Miranda, of course, he's uh, he's got his hand in this as well. Yep. It was supposed to come out, I think, uh, this year, pushed to uh, June 
2021. Tell me yeah. something about In the Heights and your character and what can we expect next year? So I'm so excited. For, I mean, In the Heights, man. It was supposed to come out on June 26th, but uh, it got moved, obviously, because because uh, it's where, where we're at in the world and, uh, you know, with this pandemic and people not being able to go to theaters. And I think it was really important for the team, for to, to the team, for people to be able to experience this uh, in the theater, you know, to experience this in, uh, in the way that everyone had uh, to have the opportunity to experience it rather uh, in the way that everyone had has envisioned it for so many years, as long as they've been working on it. And, and we, you know, we've all been working on it. So uh, this movie is about, this movie is about a community, um, a Latinx community in uh, Washington Heights, Uptown Manhattan. Uh, a few families, right? There are a few characters. There's there's Nina Rosario goes off to college. She comes back to the to to the neighborhood. She felt like she didn't really fit in college, but she's like the golden child, and um and the struggle that comes with that, the pressure, right, of coming coming from a a family, you know, where her dad worked very hard, um, to even make that possible. He owns a cab service. He's just a hard working dude, just in and day in and day out, grinding, um, j just to make a life for his daughter that is like that that you know she can feel like you know just just so he can just like give his daughter a comfortable life you know and uh and and uh and coming from where he came from and the struggles he came from and then you know the the uh you know we have Vanessa who's a she she works at the the hair salon but she wants to be a fashion designer and we and it's just about a community of people right in a body right in the, uh, the who, who have these dreams and hopes and goals and how they achieve that and how that like and 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 how the community contributes to that and the, how the community and their culture contributes to that, who they are right and, and and how that is who they are and how that is um what makes them so special and 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 how you know and, and why family is so special and and, and celebrate it in your culture and community and, and and the story is you know th th those are a few characters amongst the many but it's told through the eyes of the narrator, Usnavi, who I have, you know, the honor to play. He owns a bodega, a corner store. And you, these guys see everything all the time, all day long, people in and out of their store, all day long, buying milk, buying chips, buying whatever, right? Whatever they get. And uh, and Usnavi, Usnavi, uh, you know, I would encourage anybody, you know, uh, everybody out there to listen to the opening track. You know, I think the opening track of In the Heights uh, Usnavi lays out what you're about to see in about seven minutes. It's, I mean, Lynn so beautifully wrote it and set, he sets the, the show up, right? He sets the movie up uh, so beautifully uh, and it just gives you a, 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 a clear scope uh, of what you're about to walk into. And, uh, and Usnavi just kind of like lays it out what, what it's like to live uh, day to day in Washington Heights, and and he has dreams of going back to Dominican Republic, and, uh, and you know that's where his dad was from, and that you know they they used to have a little kiosk on the beach, and and right like there's all these all these things that he misses about being out there, but his life is so hard. He's taking care of his little cousin Sonny, who's who's so funny but can be a pain in the butt sometimes, but is he's also an activist and a revolutionary, and the kid is like. The kids got big goals and dreams, and 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 we see the challenges Sonny's facing right later on. But like, uh, you know, Usnavi really like paints this picture for us throughout the whole throughout the whole movie and narrates um, narrates th throughout the entire film, and and we see his journey and people falling in and out of love, and uh, it's a beautiful movie about about people with big dreams, love. Uh, it's a celebration of culture, man. We had this one. Uh, this one uh, song called Carnaval del Barrio, like party in the hood, right? Like, and it's just like we, there's about 65 to 70 of us dancing in an alleyway in Washington Heights, singing um, about how we're gonna have a party in this neighborhood and how we're selling, you know, alza la bandera, la bandera puertorriqueña, right? Like raise your flag, the Puerto Rican flag, the alza la bandera, la bandera cubana, la bandera dominicana, right? raise your Dominican flag, raise your Cuban flag, raise your Mexican flag, right? Like, that song is all about celebrating who you are, right? Um, who we are, right? 
um, and and this 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 uh, Latin X culture, right? And 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 us being proud of that, and 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 uh, and really have just having a party, you know, and, and celebrate and celebrating that. And and I hope people not just Latin, you know, not just people of Latin descent or like people from from those places, but like everybody can watch this film, and it uh, make you feel a little bit or a lot proud of where you're from and where your family's from and what y'all have come through and what you've been through and 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 uh and where you are today you know where you could have been yesterday but where you are today right and where you're going you know give you hope for where you're going so um, i'm so excited for people to have this movie uh next year i'm bummed that couldn't we you know we, we couldn't have it this year but i'm excited that people get to experience it uh you know in the theaters hopefully next year amen man once again, that is uh, Anthony Ramos talking about In the Heights coming out June 2021. What has 2020 taught you? Twenty twenty has uh has taught me uh I think so many things, but I think the biggest thing I've learned was that I don't need to be running as much as I was, right? And I think I think it's almost like just focus on what's in front of you. Just pay attention to what is in front of you. Don't run away from, from uh, the noises in your head, in your heart, the things that may seem scary, um, the questions inside that may seem scary, the problems, the issues that may seem scary. Don't run away. Um, run towards them. Actually walk towards them. It's okay. You don't need to run. Just, just walk, walk right into it, right, with it your chest held high, your chin up. Um, and uh, it's all right if it's going to be bumpy. It's all right. You know, it's, it's okay. But there's so much like beauty in the silence. You know, I think, you know, I wrote a song called Figure It Out uh, on the first album. And it's all about how I was never good with silence. I was never good with dealing with myself, you know, let alone dealing with just issues in life that, you know, anything, you know, I, I, I've, I've, you know, it, it, it was always easy to be overwhelmed, right? And in this time of stopping, in this time of like really having more, like so many moments to just sit in the same spot with no noise, really figuring out, like really relishing in that. And then, uh, and, and it's like, it's amazing when you're so still and you stop, like you, you realize the things that are most important to you. I don't know how that happens, right? But I don't know about you, but I know that happens for me. Like you, when you really, stop and take time like I actually don't need to be working as hard as I was I actually could spend more time at home actually this means a lot to me I'm actually gonna go spend my time fighting for that like I'm like you know and and uh so I think you know it's just been to stop I mean not to not to set this next song up but it's really been the biggest lesson has been like it's okay to stop and there's so much beauty in doing that amen to that man quick recap Hamilton's on Disney plus you got to watch that or you're a bad person. I think that's safe to say. I think I've covered pretty much everything. Uh, the only thing that we've uh, kind of screwed up here is your wife, I'm sorry, your fiance put your, uh, put a, just a beautiful uh, taco, breakfast taco in front of you. And you've had to, that thing's gotten cold by now. So my apologies. <laughs> oh, it's all right, man. It's all right. It's still good. It's still looking just as good as when it was hot. So we Thank good. You. Mint, th thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you, Anthony. Um, uh, at the end of every interview, Anthony, fist bump to make it official. Even though it's on Zoom, hit that camera. Bam! Boom, baby. <laughs>